the atomic rocket will take off on its flight to the moon, circumnavigating it on its journey and then returning to this Earth, thus achieving the most ambitious scientific adventure of all time. 25 monitoring stations throughout the world in direct communication with the base here will follow the course of XC by means of radar installed in artificial satellites that have been launched into space at intervals during the last few years. The name of the pilot is not yet known. It is being kept secret till the last moment. There are three men who are eligible for this coveted task. From Russia, England, and America, which of them will be first to attempt, in the immortal words of Attention. Shakespeare, full Attention. soon to draw the cloud Members that hides the, the silver moon? That they may not move from the enclosure allotted to them. Can anyone tell me what's going on here? Here we are, stooging around like a pack of lost kids in the seafront, wondering what comes next. I thought this was an information center. Yeah, uh, I can put you on as something that'll save you waiting for the big blow up. Sure, you see, they've chosen me as the pilot of the rocket. As most of you who are viewing already know, the cabin of the XZ atomic rocket has a mechanism which releases it instantly in case of emergency. In fact... Attention, attention! Viewers, I was handed only a moment ago the pilot's name. The first man to be launched into space is the American John McLaren. I'm extremely happy that you have been chosen, John. I offer my congratulations both as scientist and friend. We designed and built the XZ together, John. There couldn't have been a better choice of pilot. Good luck and good landing. Guess we're all a little envious, John. But well, good luck anyway. Attention. Attention. 90 minutes to launching. Pardon me, your wife's here. I'm frightened, John. I'm frightened. Everything's going to be all right, Mary. We'll be in different worlds, John. 
I think I shall be the loneliest. There's no reason to be afraid. And don't be lonely either. It makes the waiting longer. Promise me. McLaren to go to control room. McLaren to go to control room. Well, I'll see you again in six days' time. Say goodbye to Dennis for me. <gasps> Take care of yourself. Good luck, John. Reactor control group. To report to launching site. Reactor control group. To report to the launching site. Quads three and five to their stations. Quads three and five to their stations. Good luck, McLaren. Thanks, Vicer. When I meet up with your satellite, I'll say hello to it for you. When you've passed Vices, you meet my Sputnik Peter. You can greet it for me, too. Herbert, if anything should happen out there, you will take care of Mary and the boy, won't you? If anything should go wrong with you, you must release the captain. Nothing will, though. Should you release it, try not to fall on our heads. I will, General. <laughs> your heads won't be thick enough to save me. <laughs> 40 minutes to zero. 40 minutes to zero. All personnel not on control duty will now move into the safety zone. All personnel not on control duty will now move into the safety zone. Emergency services alerted. Emergency services alerted. Approaching zero hour. At three exactly, the XC will be launched on its long-awaited journey around the moon, its fiery tail proclaiming to the world that the interplanetary era has begun. All personnel will leave the launching area. All personnel will leave the launching area. Radio contacts established. Will all radio operators stand by to receive signal? Blue warning to all stations. Blue warning to all stations. All operators check blue warning received. All operators check blue warning received. Connect the circuit R15. I'm connecting the cabin. Contact established. McLaren, check your instruments, please. Five minutes to countdown. Pressure, 05. Temperature, 18. Time of reaction, 015. All OK there? All OK, Vicer. Randowski. Sir. Make radar chain contact with all satellites. TV network in circuit. This is it, pal. Radar chain contact established. Baby USA, Jupiter 9. What about my Sputnik? Huh? Look, Sputnik.
Sputnik Beta. You see? <laughs> it's the busiest of them all. <laughs> Le Duke. Yes, Visor. Ready with the orbit calculations? Ready. 46 seconds to zero. It's all yours, Botnikov. Switch into circuit. Connections. Connection made. Contact. 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31. Radio 30, contact established. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. 19, Radar 18, context established. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, Switch 11, on. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Coordinates 414, coordinates 414, speed 28,000 kilometers an hour, 28,000 kilometers an hour. Hello, Cape Shark. Hello, Cape Shark. Calcutta here. Point Gamma, coordinates 535. 535 speed, 28,000 kilometers an hour. Moscow reporting to Cape Shark. Moscow to Cape Shark. Position of XZ. Now at its zenith. Coordinates 424. 424. He's just about to complete his first circle of the Earth. Now it's up to us. As soon as he passes Sputnik Beta, he'll enter into orbit. Coordinates 424. Le Duc. Get started on the calculations of the orbit coordinates. 424. 424. He's in orbit. Ready? In orbit at 415. Height 2,500 miles. Speed, 28,000 kilometers per hour. It's overhead now. Right. The motors have cut. Hello. Cape Shark calling McLaren. Hello. Cape Shark calling McLaren. Hello. I'm receiving you. You've done it, John. You're in orbit. How are you feeling? Fine. Can you give me your observations? Temperature constant. Cosmic radiation normal. Is the flight going well? The motors, are they running smoothly? All okay. Mrs. McLaren's outside. I've been in free flight for one minute. Meteorites? Moderate quantity. Has the loss of weight affected you? Clarence, you will be in your present position again in 45 minutes. Switch on the motors at 45 minutes, three seconds from now. After 30 seconds, you will be on course for the moon. 
As soon as you're out of orbit, cut out the motors. Okay. Quick, Mary, speak to him. John, can you hear me, darling? It's Mary. Mary? Everything's fine. Don't you worry. Nothing's wrong. He's out of range. We'll see him again in 45 minutes. Well, gentlemen, the launching has been a complete success. Thank you. The orbit calculations, Peter. Something is troubling you? You. I? That cool beauty. It freezes my powers of concentration. Sir Duke, where are the orbit calculations? I was just going to bring them along. Well, bring the other stuff too, okay? Okay, I get it. A small celebration. Come and join us? No, I'll get on with this. Well, if that's the way you feel. But you're gonna miss an excellent champagne. I'm pleased to keep the door closed. Variation and temperature affect my calculator. Professor Weiser, the orbit calculations. Hmm. Cape Shark, huh? EZ is now overhead. Oh, yes. Coordinates 434, 434 on course. Perfect. Yes, my missile is perfect. No, it is our missile. Eh? <laughs> I trust you'll think as well of this, Botnikov. The Western nations are happy to offer it to you as an expression of their appreciation. Thanks. Thank you, all of you. A replica in gold. Solid gold. After all, we couldn't offer you anything less than perfect. Of course not, Weiser. I've often given others a rocket. I never thought to receive one. <laughs> and screw the nose. Ah, a cocktail of my own invention. It contains American rye, Scotch whiskey, and French cognac. The best the West can offer. With that recommendation, I'll give it a try. <laughs> no doubt your finest invention, Weiser. But for perfection, you should add a little Russian vodka. In which case, we should call it a cordial instead of a cocktail. We can go one better. Come and try the universal panacea, champagne. Four, oh, three, this is something. two, one, <laughs> zero. Might even pull the iron curtain aside. Guess we'll all go into orbit after this. <laughs> to the successful conclusion of this venture. Geiger! He's you not missing the body. Trust Geiger to be okay. the fun. Oh, look at him. <laughs> the man born, huh? <laughs> Just look at our mascot. Do you think we ought to allow it? Oh, uh, Miss Dandridge. Miss Dandridge. Sir? Come and join us, won't you? Thank you, but I must finish the calculations on variations, of course. Oh, a well. perfect example of scientific <laughs> sang for. You put it too mildly, Stuart. I'd say she'd make an efficient refrigerator. Not at all. It's a form of pretense that she practices. Given the time, the place, a certain kiss, there'd be summer and December. You don't think so? Another of your silly notions. No, no. I've met the type before. Just to prove I'm right, I'll deliver the kiss myself. Care to bet on it? Okay, Don Juan. It's on. It's not exactly in the best of taste, but still, I'm quite confident of the outcome. How much time am I allowed? There isn't much. In six days, we'll be dispersing. Oh, six days will be ample. The winner to fix the forfeit. Well, aren't I most generous? Or most unsure. Now, where are you going? To start the attack. Communication from Moscow. Thanks. I brought you a share of the celebration. Kind of you to think of it. I'll have it when I've done this. Here, special for you. Oh, very well, then. So 
something troubling you? You are. I? Your attempts at childish frivolity are rather disturbing. In that case, I guess I'd better leave you alone, then. Your guess is correct. And don't forget the door, the variations... Variations in temperature affect the calculator. I know. There are now 20 seconds to go. Hello, McLaren. Cape Shark calling. Everything in order? Are you ready? I require the data and the counter for starting the motors. 30,000 kilometers an hour until zero plus four, after which you will push them to maximum speed. Okay. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Start at one. Start at two. Start at three. I can't hear anything, and he's still talking. John, what's wrong? We can't hear you. John, hold it! Sir, I'm losing contact. John, John, John listen to me. Operators. Cut the atomic Please reactor. Plus, Steve is going to scream. This one, sir, can you control the wavelength? You Did you hear, John? Disconnect the reactor and release the cabin, and you'll be all right. John, listen to me. Cut loose. Release the cabin, man. Hello, hello. Take shark to XZ. Take shark to XZ. Call her or observatory general alarm to all stations. Yes, sir. Hello. Call up Washington. Admiral Goodrich. Yes, General. I'll take the call in my office. Hello. Hello. Cape Shark calling Mount Hula. Connect me with Washington. Washington. Hello. Attention. Attention. Emergency services red warning. General. Emergency what's gone wrong? Now, don't warning. get upset. We've lost contact temporarily, but for safety's sake, we've ordered John to cut loose. He'll be all right. Of course. He releases the cabin, cuts in his retired rocket, and then brings it straight back to Please, Earth. Please, General, find him quickly. Never. Please find him. I assure you, Mary, there's no need to... Radio worry. and television operators report to control. Reverend Point, Beta 1-2. Off course, 5 degrees. Tangents, 401. He has already lost a great deal of height. Altitude, 1,200 miles. Fuller Observatory calling Base Control Cape Shark. Hello. Hello. Base Control Cape Shark receiving you. The pilot has released the cabin. We have this instant sighted him. An XC? It is completely off course. We are trying to pick it up now. Hello. What is the position of the cabin? Altitude, 1,200 miles. Your radar screen should show it. Here it is. He's losing height, though. Coordinates 464. Four. That's on the west coast, around Cape Muir. Stewart, link up with coastal stations to be ready to salvage. Towards the beach. Hello, one five call. Cabin coming down over Cape Newark. Message received. Message received. Continue over. One five degrees southwest of position number one five. Here it is. Helicopter IS one five. Helicopter IS one five. Get along to the beach as directed. The cabin should be landing any moment. Cape Shark, helicopter pilot radioed. He has picked up McLaren and is returning now.
Give me the transmitter. Yes, Professor. Stuart, any news from the observatory? I haven't picked up the XZ yet. They must be out of their range by now. Have you asked the other observatories to join in the search? Yes, sir. Thank you. Why this delay, Herbert? Try to have patience, Mary. It's impossible to go on living in this agony. I must see him. I must. Look, please, just for a second, can't I? He's making a good recovery. You may go in now, but don't tire him too much. It was terrible. Terrible. Don't worry anymore. We're together now, Mary. Yes. Us, Dennis. He sends you his love. He's at home waiting. Oh, John. Now then, John, let's have it. What happened to you up there? When I switched on the third motor, the rocket started to veer off course. I did my best to control it, but the steering gear just wouldn't respond. It had evidently jammed or something. If I'd waited any longer to release the cabin, it would have been too late. We'd have been outside the Earth's gravity. Of course, you disconnected the atomic motor. No, I didn't. I left it to you to do it. But I radioed to you that the control panel was out of order. Wasn't it cut out? We didn't hear you. We'd already lost contact. So we've launched a missile into outer space and... loaded full of potential death. Hard grind, and what's the result? Great black letters, a mile high, announcing our failure. John, no one could help what happened. But just for a while, can't you try and forget it? Only two days now, and we'll be home again. At last, we'll be able to spend a little time together. Make up to Dennis a little of the fun he's missed. Uh, when does the plane leave for New York? Tomorrow evening at 7 from Melbourne. Hmm. You'll have to be up early. It's a good half day's drive from here. Gee, I've made it! I've made it, Pop! You can't count that. The boomerang should have whizzed right back to you. But it wouldn't, no, sir. Not even when I tied an elastic to it. Yeah. The Dick here. Can you come over right away? What's so urgent? Station Tomos advised us that Sputnik Beta's radar is transmitting a signal we can't account for. I shan't be long. Sorry, Mary, that was an urgent call from La Duke. I'll probably have to work late. Now, don't wait up for me. But we're going home tomorrow. Sure, son. We still are. Mom, can you find room for this, please? And this as well. Listen to this. Magnetic disturbance might cause it. No, I just can't account for it. Here comes our satellite. Its radar certainly got hold of something. Here it is now on the screen, that little spot at four or five degrees. And the other stations? They're also registering the track. And it's exactly the same signal from all of them, even the Sputnik. 
You don't think it could be a nebula, Alex? No. Or the tail of a comet? We have just finished correlating the data received from the other stations. It all coincides. The echo's at four or five degrees. It's obviously millions of kilometers away. It could be the XC. I'm afraid somebody will have to stay here all night. Stuart, how about you? Sure. And you, Katie? You may have to make okay. some more checks. Can't say I'm keen on it, but still, we'll do our best. Good. By tomorrow, the situation should be clearer. All this data will need checking. If you get any news, let me know before I leave, will you? Okay, John. Good night. See you tomorrow. If I may make a suggestion, Professor Weiser, as Stuart needs some rest, I thought that perhaps I could do his duty. A really noble-hearted friend. No, not as noble as you might think. You see, the heart enters into it. Oh, well, I guess you'd better stay, then. Okay, Stuart, come on. It might stop that yawning. Hello, Geiger. What is it? What's the matter with him? He sure looks troubled, doesn't he? It is. Oh, it must be a magnetic distortion. Better check the data. Let's have it. I'll work it out. And now, a few minutes hard-earned rest. Are you calculating the time? Naturally. And making sure the moon is in the best position. Know something? When you're not immersed in mathematics, Katie, the metamorphosis is staggering. I can't imagine why you ever chose this career. I think fate decreed I'd become a mathematician, having this encounter in mind. But seriously, since I met you, I can think of no one else. Destiny sure plays odd tricks. Well, has the ice thawed a little, do you think? The melting point's certainly risen. All gamblers take a risk when they make a bet. You knew about it? You wanted to win, didn't you? Okay, so you won, smart guy. Now get out and leave me alone. I'm sorry, Katie. I hadn't any idea. Okay, Peter. I'd be glad if you'd just forget the whole thing. Here's a news flash. Extraordinary phenomena have been reported from many countries. Large herds of animals are abandoning the coastal regions and making their way to the interior in a colossal and surprising migration which hour by hour assumes ever more alarming proportions. We are informed that out-of-season migrations of this magnitude have never before been recorded. It appears that this unease is affecting not only the wild animal population, it has also been reported from zoos and owners of domesticated animals. Authorities agree the animal's acute instinct has evidently sensed an indefinable menace, but discloses that the causes of this phenomenon are for the moment unknown and cannot therefore be explained. Base control, Cape Shark, receiving you. Chela Prince, control post number one, two calling. We have picked up the echo of the Sputnik track. It comes from a point at four, four degrees. Repeat, please. Four, four degrees. Thank you, Chela Prince. It's moved away one degree. Yesterday it was at four, five. Control, Cape Shark. Sydney calling. Information from all observatories now complete. Silver Island reports that they registered yesterday at 11 hours 50 an atomic explosion in Delta Zone. Zone of the Delta asteroids. At 4 or 5 degrees. Thank you, Sydney. That's something. Hello, Professor Weiser. Le Duc here. 
Sydney report that the Silver Island Observatory registered yesterday at 11 hours 50 an atomic explosion in the zone of the Delta asteroids from where we were receiving the signal. Visor? Oh? Well, how large? Have a word with the astronomer, Carter. Okay. I'll be right over. Barry, I'm terribly sorry, but I've got to stay. We'll have to put off leaving for a few days. Days or months, John. Where your work's concerned, you never know the difference. I've had enough of living in this desert. I guess you're right, Mary, but it so happens that whether you like it or not, I'm needed Maybe here. you are, but I still don't think that gives you the right to neglect us for it. I can't take any more of it, John. I don't think you realize what I went through when you were lost. This works my life. I thought you'd accepted that by now. You mean, then, that I'm to accept selfishness? After all, that's what this inordinate concern for your work adds up to. No, John. You're impossible to live with now. I'm taking Dennis home. Do that. It'll be better for the two of us. The explosion took place at exactly this spot. Near the point of orbit here of the group of Delta asteroids. I don't think there's any doubt that the XZ caused the explosion. Look, I went off course about here in this direction. And here at four or five degrees is where they register the explosion. Now, it's from that spot we're getting the echo. The two facts are obviously related. At midnight, however, the echo came at 4-4 degrees, and then 4-3 degrees, 4-1, and about 10 minutes ago, Copenhagen reported it at 3-9.12. In which case, the echo must come from a moving mass. Maybe he'll catch us up. When, though? We hope it'll be soon. The remarkable revelations made by Professor Weitzer have caused much comment in international circles. For the first time, a discovery in the cosmos is due to radar. The observatory at Hula is now trying to identify this mysterious object in space. Furthermore, the government is extremely worried by the continued reports of strange phenomena. In New York and other places in the East Coast, hundreds of people have witnessed a singularly strange mirage. A large sphere surrounded by a gigantic halo has appeared in the sky, disappearing only at the approach of sundown. Other extraordinary phenomena are reported from several European cities. Mysterious balls of light have been appearing in various parts of the sky. The exact explanation of these phenomena is not yet known, but it is generally thought by men of science that they are in some way the result of recent experiments in space travel. The latest information on the extraordinary migration of animals confirms that this great exodus continues. Observers in the Arctic regions report that birds are migrating south two months ahead of their usual time. It's an extraordinary fact that all these movements have their beginnings in the coastal regions. Taking this into account, it has been suggested that the fear exhibited by the animals could be indicative of imminent marine disturbances such as tidal waves and floods. From the intensity of the animal's flight, now reflected all over the world, the mysterious peril would appear to be very near. Hey, hey General, General Van Dorf! Oh. All right, General, come on, we tell us. Van Dorf! We're winning right all that. Hey, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, boys. Right now, I have nothing to say. You'll just have to be patient. As soon as we have news, we'll issue a communique. I've got to get to my paper in New York. Come on, tell us. How long are you going to keep us waiting? The 
Duke. Any news in yet from Mount Hula? No, not yet, sir. We've been calling them all morning. They're setting control, sir. Hello, Here's the data on the magnetism, Katie. Good. Get it on the computer. Hello, hello, Cape Shark Base Control, calling Mount Hula. Hello, hello, Mount Hula. Come in, Mount Hula. Can Any news? We haven't been able to make contact in, yet, either with Star Magnetic or Stevens. We'll keep on trying until they answer you. Come in. I think something serious is going to happen. Then don't think, because our instruments aren't registering any alarming phenomena yet. You've seen the way the animals oh. are behaving. Their instincts are more sensitive than our instruments. Last night, Geiger disappeared. Let's have a look at the magnetism. Shark calling Mount Hula Observatory. Hello. Miss Dandridge, are you through checking yet? Sure, hold on while I tell you, McLaren. The index of magnetism is showing a constant four. Right now, the indicator has dropped to minus four. Minus four? I can't believe it. Seems like this thing in space is absorbing all the Earth's magnetism. The observatory's on the line. At last. They're asking us to cut out our link with the other stations and to close the circuit. Greenwood, Peterson, leave us alone, will you? Oh, Dick, see that all junior staff are warned. No one's to come in. Close the circuit. Circuit closed. Orders are not to let anyone pass. No one's to come in. Hello, control calling. Hello, control calling. Guards are posted. Right. Go ahead, Stuart. Hello, hello, Mount Hula. Cape Shark calling. Mount Hula here, receiving you. Hello, Cape Shark. Are you on the closed circuit? Yes, Mount Hula, you may go ahead. Is Viser there? Harris Smith? Are you alone, Viser? I'm with my colleagues. You can talk. We've been able to locate the source of the echo. Well? It comes from the mass of Delta asteroids. The explosion of XZ's atomic charge has driven them out of orbit. They've become attracted one to another, forming a single mass which is now wandering in space. Direction? Towards the Earth. From our first calculation, the mass of asteroids will enter the Earth's gravitational field in about five days' time. Bombardment of meteorites. Does anyone else know this yet? No, we are awaiting your instructions. Make sure it stays top secret. If it leaks out, there'll be chaos. We understand you. We must inform the Security Council of the United Nations. As from now, I'm declaring a state of emergency. No one must leave the base without my personal authority. All radio communications will be made in code. Switchboard, switchboard, an urgent call to Washington. Stuart, call New York base. Get me the airport. It's most urgent. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, yes, hold hello, the line, hello. please. Headquarters speaking. Hello, New York. Hold the line, it's please. It's engaged. Will you hold on? on the line. Put me through to departures. Departures? Today's flight to New York. Has it left there yet? Just a moment, please. It has been airborne about one minute, sir. Thanks. observations have revealed that these asteroids have a diameter in excess of 10 kilometers. They may be compared to diminutive planets, together weighing millions of tons. That they are being drawn towards the Earth's surface in a single mass is, of course, due to their strong metallic attraction. This explains the extraordinarily heavy fall in the Earth's magnetism. Therefore, a collision with the air surrounding the Earth is not great enough to destroy the meteors. It will increase their velocity. When they fall on our planet, there is little probability of it being able to withstand the impact. They will be fiery thunderbolts. To give you a precise idea of what the result of the fall of one meteor could be, here is a very instructive picture. It shows the great crater made by a thunderbolt falling at Tunguska in Siberia in 1908. It is many kilometers in diameter. The size of that meteor was insignificant when compared with the cluster of asteroids a million times greater now rushing towards us. Here's the latest data transmitted by Mount Hula. I've checked it on our calculator. Ah, 
Gentlemen, I've just been handed the latest report from the Mount Hula Observatory. Their calculations on the trajectory of the meteors lead us to believe that it is possible that before striking the Earth, they will have to traverse the moon. If I understand correctly, the moon will intercept the meteor? Precisely. Its attraction may well disintegrate the cluster, and the asteroids would be dispersed into space. A miracle. No, you have my apologies if that is what I implied. I thought to infer rather a reason to hope. By all means, let us hope, since it seems to be the only expedient left to us. However, let us not lose sight of the fact that even were the moon to be only slightly grazed, the Earth will still feel a repercussion. I fear, as a result, the Earth's magnetism would become distorted. And presupposing this, then enormous tidal waves will submerge all coastal regions. And those regions must be evacuated, and we have three days to do it. Objections? Thank you, that is all. The armed forces will take charge of the evacuation. They will requisition whatever transport is necessary. Do you agree, Krasnov? Agree, Dimbledon. They must be given absolute priority. I suggest that the communique on the proposed evacuation is issued as soon as we're in control of the situation. Agreed. We are interrupting this program to broadcast a special communique. The armed forces have been entrusted with the task of maintaining law and order. A state of emergency was proclaimed at 12 noon today. Notre planète est en train de passer un péril très grave. Un énorme amas d'astéroïdes vole vers nous des régions les plus éloignées de l'espace. Ils passeront dans l'orbite de la Lune. Ils vont en environ 4 jours le nombre du monde de l'Ouest. Ils vont détruire et détruire notre planète. Un comité international de scientifiques, assisté par les Unités Nations, a été créé. Tous les régions de la Lune seront évacuées à la fois. Je répète, à la fois. Il n'y a pas de moment à perdre. La mer va flouder les hinterlands pour des centaines de kilomètres. Dimbledon, ici. Écoutez. 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 You are to start evacuation on the west coast. Requisition whatever transport you need. That's all. Any news? Holland does not find anything so easy. It means a total evacuation in her case. Attention, attention. All roads must be kept clear for refugee convoys. Panic in the enemy of safety. His order will be surprised with the utmost severity. His order will be surprised with the utmost severity. Attention, attention, you are warned not to panic. You will await your turn in an orderly manner. There is no need for panic. Everyone will be evacuated. Incidence 180 degrees. To all stations on circuit. To all stations on circuit. We are transmitting information of approach as at today, 1500 hours local time. Will Professor McLaren go to General Dimbleton? Will Professor McLaren go to General Dimbleton? Professor, you've forgotten to give me your reports. Oh, yeah. To all stations on circuit. To all stations on circuit. We are transmitting information of approach as at today, 1,500 hours local time. The meteorites are now 1,800,000 kilometers away. Here's the position. The cluster of meteorites should cross the path of the moon tomorrow at about 22 hours, 40 minutes. Let's hope it will disintegrate them. If not, when is zero hour? About six hours later. Approximate hour of contact, minus 37 hours, 40 minutes. Repeat. Approximate hour of contact, minus 37 hours, 40 minutes. The end is not far off. 
We're responsible for this catastrophe. That we are is purely accidental, my friend. But this time it involves the whole of humanity. Maybe there's a boundary we are not allowed to pass. Oh, we've passed that with the nuclear age. All we've left is recourse to the Almighty. You believe in God? Is it surprising? I think most men do, to some extent, depending on circumstances. <laughs> Your cocktail, but with the addition of a little vodka. <laughs> Our base is in this area on high ground, so we're out of the sea's reach. Then the base will be able to shelter evacuees. Sure, the stored tunnel could possibly shelter around four or five thousand. Route evacuees from Strepper to this area. Yes, Van Dorf here. Of course, get on with it. You must evacuate the entire coast by midnight. But we've no more transport anyway. The roads are choked with refugees. Imperative to alert Air Force stations and civil airports to stand by. Speed is vital. Got that? You'll feel a lot better. I'll take over. Go on. But you haven't slept a wink either. Don't worry about that, Katie. Guess I'm used to late nights. Professor Visor, I asked the Duke to stand in for me for an hour. Distance 800,000 kilometers. Distance 800,000 kilometers. No! Rantowski! Where's McLaren? His wife's here. He's with General Dimbleton. Let him know, will you? Mary. Herbert. I'm so glad to see you here. Where's John? They've gone to fetch him. But we thought you were on the plane. No, we didn't go. I decided to wait at the airport, hoping that John would join us. But then we heard that terrible communique, so I came back as quickly as I could. Herbert, is there any hope? Attention! Attention! All civilian personnel will leave the base and proceed to the shelter. But how long have we left? Not long now, Mary, unless they disintegrate as they cross the moon's path. Mary! Oh, John. I'm sorry. I should have waited here, John. You're right to go. You see, I realize since just how important you both are. Oh. Ah! Dennis! Come on, son. All technical personnel to control. John. All technical personnel to control. John, they're calling us. Come on. Look, I must get back. You'll have to go to the shelters. Come on. I'll find someone to take you there. But you... I'll be happy when I know you're safe. All technical personnel to control room. All civilian personnel will proceed to the shelters immediately. All civilian personnel will proceed to the shelters immediately.
Keep your eyes glued to that screen. We must know how many meteors escaped the moon's attraction. is still distorted. If the echo isn't picked up within a few minutes, we can presume that they have disintegrated. But it can't be as hopeless as all that. kilometers. Distance, 350,000 kilometers. Mrs. Lyon, it's your own fault and you deserve it. And each one of you here is guilty. This is the judgment. The day of wrath. There they are. It's all over. That'll do. Grant of she pull yourself together. It's your fault. Yes. Your rocket has brought destruction from outer space. Your blasted rocket was just another missile, a destroyer like the rest of them. A missile? Hubbard, Vyatnikov, it's not the end. I've just had an idea. Randovsky's lunatic ravings about missiles started it. The missiles can be used to save us. Have every suitable rocket throughout the world equipped with atomic warheads, then launch to hit the target at a given hour, they would disintegrate the meteorites. He's right. We must start the computer program. Can we do it in time? It must be done. It's the only chance there is. Well, we'd better get on with it. Just one thing, McLaren. We let loose a flood of radioactivity. Although, General, we chance that they'll make contact with the meteors before they reach the atmosphere. Yes, but have we sufficient missiles? There are thousands of meteors. And America has thousands of missiles. As for Russia, she has, oh, we can only guess. Can you tell us, Betnikov? Oh, probably twice as many as America. Okay, it's up to you. A couple of hours is all you have to prepare firing data for all bases. Do you think the calculator can do it? Of course, provided there's no atmospheric disturbance. Even so, it's vital that the data is produced on time, whatever the cost. Sure. General, how much time is required to alert the American bases? Half an hour. And the Russian? Less. We're always ready. Top priority. Top priority. General alert, now in operation. This is Oslo calling all bases. Launching towers alerted. Urgent, over. Headquarters London to all bases. Missile ramps alerted. Stand by for launching. Urgent, over. Immediately. Thank you. This is Paris calling. General alert in operation. This is the Kremlin. General alert to all bases. Our plan, Red Moon, is to go into operation immediately. Do you understand? Orders for alert. Hello? Top priority. Yes, sir. I'll have it transmitted immediately. I'll pass them on, General. 
Attention, launching control squads to your posts. All control squads prepare for launching. Distance, 150,000 kilometers. Distance, 150,000 kilometers. Thanks, Katie. Here's another batch. Stuart, here's the data for European launching bases for London and North Europe. 0314 hours. Coordinate 661. Got it, Stuart? Hello, London. This is Cape Shark. Hello, London. This is Cape Shark. Watch your position now. Okay. Yes, go ahead. It's what? Repeat it, will you? Thanks. Yes, go on. Coordinate 653. Hello, Cape Shark. Hello, Cape Shark. We require firing data. Are you there? Hello? Hello, Kip Shah, can you hear? For well, Marseille, 0134 hours, 20 seconds. Coordinate 660, okay? Hello, Frankfurt. Hello, Frankfurt. Hello, Cape Shark here. Cape Shark here, what's the position? Cape Shark to Marseille. We're transmitting oh, the following firing right. data for your sector. Ready. At what? Thank you. Oh, three, one, four hour, twenty seconds. still rising. If it stops the calculator, then we're finished. Sure, I'll pass it on. London's just reported an increase in ground temperatures taking place throughout the world. Fires are breaking out everywhere. Set the air conditioner at 10 below zero. If that isn't sufficient, push it to maximum. Vidic. Vidic, is the calculator still working? It is, for the moment. The air conditioning has neutralized the rising temperature. I shouldn't be surprised if we have a hurricane soon. The heat waves disturb the atmospheric pressure. The shelters are very deep, you know. Natural coolness of the place, I doubt if they'll notice the heat. Distance, 130,000 kilometers. Distance, 130,000 kilometers. They're evacuating all of them. The flames have reached the shelters now. Look, we'll stay here. You go, John. Right, sir. Right, sir. Range finders of eight launching sectors are out of action due to the heat. They're asking if we can do the calculations. Range finders of eight launching sectors are out of action. Any possibility of you giving the range? I don't know. How much time have we got? A little more than an hour. That should do, provided the calculator doesn't pack up. This is the end for all of us. We'll all be annihilated. The judgment is irrevocable.
take it out. Calculator. Is it still working? No. The air conditioner's out of action. Oh, where's Weiser? Butnikov? Peter. They're all down in the cellar trying to start it again. Glasgow calling. Please give us range data. Urgent, urgent. But I can. It's not available, Glasgow. It's not available. It's not available. You got that? Herbert, get in the cop. Killed the sentry, cut off the air conditioner. He won't let anyone near him. Just one step forward and you had it. Bandowski, get out of the way. You'll die too unless we can start the air conditioner again. You won't escape your doom. No one will. No one. Okay, well, I'll go for him together. One of us should get him then. with the calculations. Distance, 50,000 kilometers. Distance, 50,000 kilometers. Go on. Don't waste precious time on me. I've no idea I'm saving you. But there's still a chance to save. Humanity. 
It's okay. The air conditioner's working. Be ready to transmit in five minutes. Just a moment, Colton Halkin. It's okay. The calculator is working. Stay on the line now. Glasgow, Gibraltar, Ankara. The calculator's working. Hold the line. Hold the line. I repeat, the calculator is working. In five minutes, we'll be transmitting range data. Calling Cape Shark. Calling Cape Shark. Are you there? Request information requiring data for the Near East Sector. It's urgent. Answer needed, Cape Shark. Stuart, data from Madrid, time of launching 0311 hours 25, coordinates 43892, repeat. Stations on circuit. Calling all stations on circuit. There remain four minutes to launching. At this moment, the safety of the human race is entrusted to the very weapons that were created for its own destruction. Let us commend ourselves to God. East sector, stand by. There are now four seconds to zero.
Air rockets launched. Instruments of Cape Shark. Launching's affected. Quick, everyone, look at this. Transmit the news to all stations on circuit. Guy! Attention! Come back, Guy! Attention! This is Cape Shark calling all stations on circuit. This is Cape Shark calling all stations on circuit. Radar observations now show that the mass of asteroids is now disintegrated. Geiger! The remaining Geiger! fractions of meteors have dispersed Geiger! into space. All aircraft equipped with instruments for measuring radioactivity will take off immediately. The order to stand down applies as from now to all launching sites and observation posts. Few hours ago, and we were asking ourselves if we'd ever see it again. <laughs> 